Hello everyone, and welcome to my presentation, where I will share 10 principles of my political philosophy. It is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. It is possible to hear what others have to say without agreeing with them. Aristotle also said that humans have a natural impulse toward politics and that cities are founded that we might live but continue that we may live happily. Proverbs tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. My principles have been formed through the years by my religious beliefs. I was reared in a Christian home and chose to follow Christ myself at a young age. My religious background has resulted in a desire for traditional moral values and conservative opinions. So with this background of Christian upbringing and scriptural guidance, my desire to create a loving community for my family, and armed with the education I'm receiving, I bring to you my 10 principles. Principle number one, I believe that government should be limited to the protection of life, liberty, and property. Having always considered myself a very solid conservative, Imagine my surprise upon hearing Nigel Ashford's lecture on core principles of classical liberalism, as my first principle is one that he discussed. As a conservative, I found much to disagree with Stephen Monsma about. However, I did agree with his statement that in order to defend true freedom and the creative opportunities for man which flow from freedom, sometimes government should be expanded and sometimes contracted. We also read in Luke chapter 12 that government is set up to handle civil matters, and furthermore in 1 Samuel chapter 13 that government should stay out of church matters. Government is important in our society, of course, but its reach must be limited. Uncle Sam is not the answer to all of life's dilemmas. Principle number two. I believe abortion should be banned except in the instance of saving the mother's life. Psalms chapter 139 and verse 13 says in the New Living Translation, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. This debate on abortion will rage on as scientists and politicians continue to argue about when life begins. As Thomas Aquinas discussed the four types of law, eternal, divine, natural, and human, he reminds us that we need the divine law of God to supervene so that no evil might remain unforbidden and unpunished. Also, let me go back to principle number one. Government should provide protection for all, including the unborn. Next, I believe the Constitution should be honored and upheld as intended by our founding fathers. Justice Scalia's rather entertaining commentary on the Constitution made me chuckle a few times, but reminded me that our Constitution has served us well and should be upheld as written, not as the majority demands changes. Our laws are to be fair and balanced, not popular to the reigning majority. Edmund Burke also reminds us of the importance of the inheritance of our forefathers. Although he was not, of course, referring to our American Constitution, his views are certainly applicable as our Constitution also preserves a unity in so great a diversity of its parts. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 13 and 14 says, When we are mature in the Lord, we won't be tossed about by every wind of new teaching. And Ephesians 5 verse 15 admonishes us to be careful how we live, not to live like fools, but like those who are wise. And I do believe our forefathers were wise. I believe in traditional marriage between a man and a woman. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 tells us that therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Although our modern culture is leading away from marriage, Lawrence Mead reminded us in his writings that the traditional plan of adults getting their education, going to work, marrying and having children in that order usually resulted in success. I believe this success sequence can generally be relied upon because it follows God's plan. I believe that the government should secure our borders, allowing immigration legally. We read in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 9 that the Israelites were not to oppress foreigners as they were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Scripture further tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 10 that they were to show love to foreigners. We were reading in Yuval Levin's writings on capitalism that our purpose is to protect 
and strengthen our way of life, to stand up for a social and economic system that has lifted billions out of poverty and vastly improved our world in countless ways. We welcome those who want to come to our great country, but we must expect them to follow our laws to get here. Then, as Cider admonishes, once they are here, we are to love them and welcome them to our communities. Principle number six says that I believe the government should be fiscally responsible and efficient. Adam Smith said, and rightly so, that the virtues of self-command and discipline are utterly essential to capitalism and to the liberal society more generally. As a society, we are obligated to help the poor, as confirmed by Yuval Levin and Ron Sider, but our modern welfare goes far beyond the poor. It is time to tighten our belts, balance our budget, and start living within our means as a nation. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 says it is God give, that gives the power to get wealth. And Proverbs 22 and verse 7 says the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Luke 14 and 28 says, Which of you, when building a tower, doesn't count the cost first? We must, as a nation, become more disciplined. Principle number seven. I believe we should have the strongest military possible to protect our country. As we read in the interview this week with Michael Cromartie, you begin to realize that there are very real people out there who mean harm. It is not evil to protect our citizens from the truly totalitarian regimes and their expansionist tendencies. Even Plato said that everyone who calls any state courageous or cowardly will be thinking of the part which fights and goes out to war on the state's behalf. Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 7 reassures us that God places leaders in authority over us to do good. And William Symington tells us that nations are thus invested with a high and noble character, their rulers ministers of God. Principle number eight. I believe America must become energy independent. As a conservative, I favor reasoned and temperate progress, but I do favor progress. Progression in a society is that spirit and body of talents which push us to prudent reform and improvement as we learned from Russell Kirk. We must use our knowledge and resources to become energy independent. Plato also tells us a virtue of the state was wisdom, for by knowledge do men counsel well. Proverbs 24 and verse 5 says, The wise are mightier than the strong, and those with knowledge grow stronger and stronger. I believe that health care reform should remain in the hands of trained physicians and not be hampered by government interference. Job 28, verse 17 and 18, tells us that wisdom is more valuable than gold and crystal, and its price is far above rubies. The invaluable knowledge held by our physicians must be respected more than the demands or the rejections of insurance companies. Together, as a nation, we make decisions in the best interest of our citizens, and physicians make decisions in the best interest of their patients. It is important to realize that health care reform is a complex issue, and as we were reminded by Dr. Black, we need to play fair in our war of words and apply the golden rule when discussing needed changes. Principle 10. I believe in a simplified tax code that is fair and just for everyone. In Mark chapter 12 and verse 17, Jesus said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. And in Proverbs 16 and verse 11, we read that the harvest scales and balances belong to the Lord, and all the weights in the bag are of his making. As we read from Ron Sider, weights and measures should be the same for everyone. We cannot oppress the poor, but we should not oppress anyone. And the exorbitant tax burden is out of control as our government continues to spend as if there is an unending supply of cash available. As Levin reminded us, the American welfare state needs trimmed and reformed to help the needy become more independent, rather than making the middle class less independent. We need balance and discipline. What I am learning, and what I am still learning, is that our disagreements are about policies and not people. The dead are not raised by politics, as we learned from Michael Cromartie. And whether you call yourself a Republican, a Democrat, a conservative, or a liberal, we're all seeking what is best for our country. Thank you.